The following is a production of Learfield Sports. The Badger Hockey Digest, presented by Charter Communications. Hi, welcome to the Badger Hockey Digest, brought to you by Charter. I'm Brian Posick with Badgers head coach Mike Eaves inside the Cole Center, where the Wisconsin Badgers will open the first round of the WCHA playoffs this weekend against Minnesota Duluth. And Mike, congratulations on securing home ice. It was one of your goals this year, and you got it done. Yes, it was. It took uh, all the way to the last weekend, but we did get it done, and we did it in fine fashion, and we did it in unusual fashion, playing out at the Dane County Memorial Coliseum. Uh, it's our 50th year of um, the modern era of, of Badger hockey, and it was our last last game in the WCHA. And uh, kind of play out there where it all started is kind of a, was a fascinating and unusual circumstance. And I tell you, the fans that came out were good and loud, especially Saturday night, weren't they? Yeah, it was a great atmosphere on Saturday back at night. Excuse me, and it, it, it was. Interesting talking to some of the alumni, Theron Welsh, Robin Drinka. It really brought memories back for them. And the fans that were there, they, they were hardcore fans. They were, uh, I had forgotten that the fans in the lower area stand up for most of the game. Oh, sure. And uh, there they were standing up. And uh, the game got off to a quick start with, a, with some goals right away. And then it was just a royal battle after that. Yeah. On Friday night, the Badgers lost 4-2, to two, an empty net goal. But Saturday, they come out less than a minute in. Frankie Simonelli, a defenseman, gets in front of the net and redirects a defenseman shot Jake McCabe and <laughs> scores right away and, I, and I'm on the air saying all right off to a great start and then 20 seconds later St. Cloud ties it. Yeah it was a, it was a wild and wacky first period there was a lot of energy in the building and when you get goals like that it really draws the fans into the game right away and then after that it became a real battle there was a lot of physical play uh, good saves I, I thought we carried the play for the most part and and then uh, the second goal that Michael Mersch got was uh, his pretty goal, a highlight his goal as I've ever seen. And he even talked about it. He was a little surprised. <laughs> and, uh, but it was, it, was, it was a fun game, and we deserved that game, Brian. We played hard enough and did enough good things and were rewarded for the victory in the end product. Yeah, Michael Mersch had two goals. He now has 22, which is tops in the WCHA. That may have been his best-looking goal of the year. But you mentioned that he was dynamic Saturday. I mean, he proved right there that he's an all-conference worthy player. Well, he had uh, as many scoring chances as anybody on our team, and he scored the empty netter, but there was another uh, spectacular rush that he had where he did a spinorama yeah. a la uh, Savard, Denny but, not, Savard. Yeah, but yeah. Not, not quite as quick. <laughs> and there was a great big re rebound there that uh, Woodsy had a whack at, and he was just good all over the place. And uh, it was a kind of game, uh, I think he would, he would even tell you, he was disappointed in his game Friday, he felt he could have done more, but on Saturday he responded like a champion. Yeah, and the empty net goal that Michael score the play was made on several accounts Mark Zangerly, Jake McCabe, Tyler Barnes who didn't touch the puck and maybe should have gotten an assist with a yeah. play he made along the wall and then Mersh finishing it off. Well that's the way that Coach Huey, uh, Coach Huchuk had uh, laid it out there. Mm -hmm. Win the face off, rim it hard, get to the defenseman and make him miss the puck and then cross ice support and Michael was there to put in the empty net so that uh, when you diagram it out like that you look like a genius and uh, <laughs> Chewy gets great credit for that. Yeah and you said that they deserved that win your team deserved and earned home ice advantage yeah. in a very difficult league from one to seven, and you could go down to eight and nine and ten for that matter. This was one of the most difficult conference seasons I can recall. Well, again, that word parity pops up, and in, in, in every sport, seems to be talking about it across the boards. And uh, to get the job done and play as well as we did with the start we had was fantastic. Yeah, the Badgers 12, three and five in their final 20 league games, and now head into the WCHA playoffs against Minnesota Duluth. We'll talk about the Bulldogs and more coming up after this from Charter. Who needs this modern world? I can live just fine out here without the road rage and boy bands. Of course, I might miss my Charter HD with football on ESPN and Walking Dead on AMC. Just ESPN, AMC, Shark Week on Discovery HD, and Comedy Central HD. But that's it. Except for HBO HD. Charter now has over 100 HD channels and more brilliant HD shows on demand than ever. Get Charter HD for only $29.99 a month when you bundle. Well, the Wisconsin Badgers have played 36 games this season, and for Mike Eves, I thought he'd get a kick out of this. He once told a reporter that stats are for guys with good stats. Wisconsin's 
played 26 games out of 36 that have been decided by one goal or less with an empty netter. And 30 of the 36, Wisconsin's had the leader tied going into the third. My point being that you've been in every single game this season. Well, it certainly felt like that uh, <clears throat> when we were down in uh, Nebraska Omaha when we were up 5-1 after two. I didn't know, and we didn't know on the bench how to handle that because we had a four-goal cushion. I actually made it a five-goal cushion right away, but we have been in every game, and it's a credit to our guys, uh, you know, playing the way we've needed to play to at least give ourselves a chance to get be victorious. Yeah, and you were telling me on your weekly radio show a couple of weeks ago that you'd rather play those tight games than be up 6-1, 5-1, or be down 6-1 or 5-1. Well, they're meaningful. I think that when you when you get up by a lot of goals, uh, various things can happen. You get sloppy. You get mm -hmm. bad habits. Uh, the other team may get a little goofy on you. You just don't know what to have. But when, when it's a tight game, you have to play to the game plan. You have to play to good habits. You have to play to win. So you need all the elements of playing well to make that happen. And I would think, too, that by playing in those close games, you know, playoff hockey, they're all tight. That's got to help, don't you think? We talked about that going down the stretch, yeah. actually. Uh, we don't have to change our mindset at all. We know what it feels like to be in close games because we've done it all year, and that'll help us now in the playoffs. Yep. Minnesota Duluth comes to town after uh, sweeping a series last weekend from Nebraska Omaha in Duluth. It's a team that won the national championship a couple of years ago, still has a couple of pieces still remaining from that club. But Scott Sandlin's a good coach, and it seems like their young team is starting to come along right now. Well, they've won uh, here, I think, uh, five out of their last six, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. So they're on a little bit of a roll. And Scotty will have them prepared. Uh, they, they know this building. They know what they're coming in for. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it, it's going to be another battle. And I'm it's sure. interesting when you play best two out of three. It, it, it's hard to beat a, a team back-to-back -back games. But uh, we'd certainly like to try to do that and get you know, not have to play that third game. Yeah, and it's hard not to notice that Minnesota Duluth's power play is at 24%. And in the last six games, they have 14 power play goals and yeah. clicking at 44%. No, oh, that's going to be a big key for us that, A, we stay out of the box, and B, that we do a good job when we're on the penalty kill. All right. And finally, having home ice. Obviously, you don't have to travel. It's a it's an opportunity to get to the WCHA Final Five, but what other benefits do you have by playing in this rink? Well, I think just um, sleeping in your own bed. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, Coach Johnson used to talk about that a lot. And uh, just uh, the familiarity, uh, the lack, you, you don't have to use as much energy mm -hmm. in preparing for the game because you know you're familiar with everything. So it, uh, it it's all those little types of things. And the other thing for us this weekend, and it's kind of, you know, uh, there's the uh, Central District playoffs that are in Fonny <laughs> this weekend. I know your daughter's playing yes, in that. Yes, yes. By being at home, we get to go and watch that. So <laughs> there, there, there are some ripple effects by being at home and playing, but uh, those are just a couple of them. Well, we wish you the best of luck this weekend weekend Thanks, against Brian. Duluth. That's Badgers head coach Mike Eves. Wisconsin and UMD face off Friday and Saturday night at 7.05. Sunday night if necessary at the same time. All three games on the Badger Sports Network and live and free online at badgersportsnetwork.com. For Mike Eves, I'm Brian Posick. Thanks for watching the Badger Hockey Digest.